In the first year of the 21st century, a man standing by a highway in the middle of America pulled from his pocket his life savings, $30, laid it inside a phone booth and walked away. You know, I've known Daniel for 20 years before he gave up money. And then when he did give, give it up about 10 years ago, I heard about it and I just figured he was crazy. He said the money was an illusion and I didn't really believe that. In 2008 though, after the economy collapsed and money just disappeared that we thought we had, I started to give him a second look and I wondered, well maybe he had a point because if your house was worth 500,000 one day and then only 300,000 the next day, what happened to that 200,000? What was that money in the first place? Public debt soared to eight, 10, finally $13 trillion. He did not pay taxes or accept food stamps, welfare, or any other form of government handout. Instead, he set up house in caves in the Utah Canyonlands, where he forages mulberries and wild onions, scavenges roadkill raccoons and squirrels, pulls expired groceries from dumpsters, and is often fed by friends and strangers. He writes, My philosophy is to use only what is freely given or discarded and what is already present and already running. And that's what drew me to Daniel, was here was someone who's saying, you know, maybe I don't know what the solution is, but I'm going to disobey. So basically all three of these movements, left, right, and center, have come to the conclusion that our financial system is a big problem. We can't, it's so big that we can't control it, and in so many ways we feel enslaved by it. Worse, we feel powerless to change it. And then Daniel comes along and says, hey, you don't have to be part of the system. I've proven it. I've proven that you can survive and live abundantly for 12 years without using any money. And that just blows people away and it inspires them and it inspired me, which is the reason I wrote this book. The fact is, if everyone lived like the average American, the world would actually collapse much more quickly than if everyone lived like Suelo. But when Suelo comes along, why do we all say, hey, if everyone lived like you, this wouldn't work? We can cultivate freely giving and freely receiving no matter what station of life we're in. That's our true nature exists in everybody. This is a book about a guy that chose to live like a myth. You know, he chose to live like the heroes of the Bible. And that interests me. And of course, the desert is the perfect place for that because that's where religions are born. You know, I think for, for Daniel, the story has already sort of ended. I mean, he found a way to live that was meaningful, that he felt like he could live according to his heart and his beliefs, and he could find happiness. But he's not just sitting there on a hill becoming enlightened. Uh, he's really engaged with the world and he wants to get his message across. You know, he says he doesn't imagine everyone going to live in a cave, but he does imagine that money will become obsolete. <laughs>